Hey everybody, thanks for joining in today. Today we are going to do a little bit of drywall work. We're going to cover a quick few topics. Mainly we're doing jointing, um, but we're also going to cover uh, layout, screw spacing, and uh, screw depth. So today for our activities you'll be needing a, uh, a box or bag or container of a drywall uh, taping and topping compound. We're reusing this one. Uh, for half inch drywall, the ultralight that we already have pre-installed on this wall, we're going to use inch and a quarter screws. Uh, number six, we also have some fiberglass mesh joint tape, uh, a drywall tray, those nice sharp edges for scraping off your knife. We have a, a joint knife, a taping knife, and we have our screw gun with a uh, number two Phillips bit. So first and foremost, we didn't do this job, so we're gonna do a little bit of criticizing. That's too deep for a screw. The way this drywall is prepared, it has kind of a fabric overlayment on the top. It's got the gypsum on the inside and then paper on the back, and all that together makes drywall structural. It's not just a veneer. It's not just for hanging. It is actually adding uh, a structural element to the, to the walls, so you wanna maintain rigidity, and for that reason, screws you can see here versus that one you can start to see the gypsum the white poking through that screw is too deep and the second you go too deep it crumbles in there and it loses its structurality you want to just sink the screws in ever so much to where you see that outer fabric just curving in like gravitational lensing just around the circumference of the screw. All right, and also too, for the drywall panels coming together, you want these tapered ends joining to make your, your joining a lot, a lot easier. Otherwise, if you put just those, for instance, like at the top here, the square edges together, you're gonna have a buildup where you have the mesh tape and then the mud on top, but then you're gonna have to spread out more mud to even out that bump whereas this provides a nice little channel for everything to sink into. So you can just do one tape and it's perfectly flush with the rest of the wall. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna come around and we're gonna take the knife that we have here and we're gonna scrape some of these, especially with the misses where they couldn't find the stud. And we're just gonna go around and scrape everything and make sure that we don't have any boogers sticking out that we're going to have to combat with while we're mudding and our subsequent sanding. So everything else looks pretty good for our scope that we're going to cover today. We're not going to do the whole wall. I'm just going to do a little small section here to give you guys a good example. So firstly, we're going to open up our package of our fiberglass mesh tape. And we are going, and this is self-adhering, so we're just going to go run a strip down the center of this joint. And I have my taping knife here. And while I'm unrolling this, I'm going to guide it and flatten it against that joint. Put pressure on it with the edge. So that didn't work out too well. And make a nice rip. So next, when reopening these bags, you gotta make sure you make a little bit of a cut at the top here. Because when you twist them up to keep it, well, to keep the mud soft from drying out, in the twist here, the upper half, that drywall mud does dry out. So if you were to just open this up, all that crumbly drywall will fall into your mix. And when you go to spread it, those little rough pieces are like rocks and they're gonna go pinch at the edge of your joint knife or taping knife. And while you're spreading that mud, it's gonna make grooves in the wall and you're not gonna get a very flat, even spread on the mud. So to fix that, we are just going to 
cut the twist off to get rid of that dry stuff. Just like so, and that's pretty much good to go. So I like using a little mud trough. In fact, you, you definitely want to invest in one of these. This is a cheap one, it's about five bucks. It's got a nice sharp edge on both sides so you can scrape the mud off and have your source of mud in here as well to spread more on the wall. It makes the job way easier. So now with our little tray and the joint knife, we're gonna come in and we're gonna spread some of this mud. I'm gonna put some globs on here going down the length of the tape or up. All right. And then in one motion, holding the knife at about a 45 degree angle, we're just gonna work it up. Whatever's left on the knife, reapply or use your tray to scrape off whatever you need to do. You're gonna cover this area in mud. And this is a little tougher to work with right now. This mud is slightly set. It's not as fluid as it is when you buy it new. That bag's been sitting around for a little while. You want to get all of that mesh cover. We've got a little bit of an edge showing there. So that's actually frayed up. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape it down. Reapply mud over it and then give it another pass. And that's exactly what we want. Everything nice and smooth. Now, this is where the sanding blocks come in handy. We're going to set a fan on this, we're going to let it dry, or we're just going to come back the next day without the fan, whatever it takes. And there's different dry times for different muds, some of them are fast setting. Like you find in the bags and the ones you have to, uh, to mix the dry powder, you can get some that's set in 10 minutes, some that's set in 20 minutes. Um, this stuff is going to set a, a bit longer. And when that's all set, we can come in and just do a quick knockdown with that sanding sponge. And that'll smooth everything out. And also too, before you sand, you also want to make sure all of your screw holes are covered up so you just go through on the wall and where we scraped so we got all the screws covered and I did want to add a, uh, a side note um, depend you definitely want to check your local code but a good rule of thumb for spacing for the screws is 12 inches on center down the studs and on the edge of the panel, about six to eight inches on center. But again, you need to check local code and make sure that you're up.